Oh, man. All right, so this one is uh, really interesting to me. I uh, wanted the one with the G10 handle scales, but I can't find it anymore. So I found this one. It's just as good and just as cool. So let's go ahead and get into it, everybody. Let's talk blades, because that's what we are into today. Got for you guys Doug Markaita and Bastinelli Knives collaboration, the Mako folder. That's what I hear it being pronounced. Someone says the Mako because it resembles a shark in some way. I'm going to point that out. Um, I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is, but hey, it's a knife. It's cool. It's a blade. Let's get into it. Bam. So here it is. It comes in a very plain box. Bastinelli Knives, Mako folder, black FRN, so fiberglass reinforced nylon, or at least fox's interpretation because it says it's from fox gray g10 no i wish plain edge yep and there's also one that's serrated which i didn't even know about but there's that so that's kind of cool and here it is bastinelli creations maco folder new i keep saying maco because that's what it sounds like i've heard it being pronounced that way here's the other side so you got uh Funker Martial Arts. Okay, yeah, FunkerMartialArts.com. You got the Doug Markaita and Bastinelli Knives, DougMarkaita.com. I really like Markaita's marking right there. That's really cool. And, of course, you got Bastinelli Knives. You got all their contact information, and it's made in Italy. So open it up, and it's very straightforward. There's nothing fancy about this. This is just a cardboard box. You open it up, it comes in a bag, and you get your tactical silica, which you can throw in the face of your enemies and uh, get your ass beat. Um, pull this little foam insert out. There's really no paperwork with this thing, which I find it's kind of strange, but, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, that's not really important. What's important is the knife itself. But you would think you would get, you know, something else in it. You would probably get, you know, some warranty information or or something you just i think you have to go through fox knives in order to do it or bastinelli knives so there's that a very very plain jane type block box there's really nothing over the top about it other than that foam insert in there and that's basically it you don't really get anything else with the knife other than just the knife itself which to me, it's just a take it out the box, throw it in your pocket, toss the box type deal. I mean, that's just kind of how the you know the elements work, <laughs> at least in this in this situation where it just doesn't really show anything too crazy. So, getting that out of the way, here it is, the Mako folder or the Mako folder, depending on uh, how you want to say it. So, really cool. You got the wire deep carry pocket clip on this thing. And you get this uh, very thin karambit ring right here, and it's curved. So you can actually use this as and hold it as a karambit. It's a karambit style handle, but the blade itself is a trailing point. At least that's what I'm told. It's a trailing point type of blade. And it does. It's got that kind of aggressive sweep to it. And this is supposed to represent like a shark tooth, I guess. And these are the gills right here on the knife. And you got this kind of beat up, torn up look like it's been through a little bit of battles, I guess. <laughs> I think it's a bit ridiculous. Uh, when I heard that this was supposed to be the Mako, like Mako shark. Um, okay, yeah, all right, I can see that now. It just kind of seems a little dorky to me that that was kind of how it was portrayed, you know? But if I saw this, I would have think more of like a ninja kind of thing. I don't know, that's just me, though. That's just kind of my interpretation of it. But it looks really nice. It is stupid sharp. I've cut myself on this thing a couple times. I've actually stabbed my pinky. You can still kind of see it right there. It's still healing. This little extra amount of skin right there. Now, this knife in particular is extremely dangerous when you pull it out the pocket slowly. I was doing this because I wanted to get used to the flipper. Oh, not, it is. It's kind of a front flipper. But it also works as a pocket snag or a wave opener, as, uh, as I'd like to say. But this isn't a wave opener. 
This is a, a different kind of opening device, but it's supposed to wave out the pocket the very same way. So if you look on there, you got that Frank Patton number. So this is actually a patent opener by, I can't remember his first name. I don't know if it's Paul or something like that, but um, basically he created this opener to function very much like the wave without actually being the wave. So that's basically, you know, in brass tacks terms right there that it's not really the wave, but it functioned as one and it works just the same way. Uh, this is a little bit more aggressive though because of the 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 shape of the blade and the fact that this is so high up that it's no way that you cannot get this caught on anything. What's super awesome about it is that it actually works and in my opinion, just a little bit better than your typical wave feature, at least on this style type of knife. Simply because uh, the hook is so kind of, it's a little bit lower profile, this sticks up a little bit higher than your average wave opener. So it, it catches, but in a different way. And it catches in a very aggressive way because it has the jimping on this side. So it'll catch on to fabric without actually tearing it up too much. But it catches it in a way where it's more prominent. So it's actually kind of cool. So when you have it in your pocket, the thing is, is you have to turn it ever so slightly so you can catch onto the lip of your pocket as you draw it out. And when that happens, it'll catch onto that fabric and it'll pop it open. You have to do this quickly. All right. This knife is not hooked like this. It is hooked like this. <laughs> And I know this because, uh, yeah, that little extra piece of skin was from me stabbing into this pinky. So what happened was I went to pull it out slowly and that happened. So when that happened, it went, it went up and around like this and it stabbed me right in the pinky like that. And I pulled it out of my pinky and I looked and it wasn't bleeding yet until I went like that. I opened up the wound and the blood just came gushing out. This is no joke. Um, now, is it sheer stupidity? Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not used to this kind of blade shape and having a flipper on it. So when you do this, you have to do it quickly. You have to make sure and be aware where your fingers are and how you draw the knife and what angle you do it in. You have to be very aware of it because if you're not, you can cut yourself with this particular piece and because of the way that it's hooked in the opposite direction you can make a mistake more so because when you have it hooked like a regular karambit you have that smoother part so you don't have to worry about it stabbing into you this is kind of having it in the opposite direction so just be aware of that um that's physical proof right there and i've had this knife for a little while i just didn't want to do a review on it until today so i've had it for I want to say about, what, two, three weeks? Maybe even a month. <laughs> I can't remember when I got this thing. Um, but this is a great knife. This is a great self-defense knife. Uh, it, it reminds me very much of the uh, the Tonto version of the Fox Karambit. It's called the Dart, I believe. Uh, also designed by Doug Markaida. Awesome stuff. You got a little, you know, a little ninja tool in you in your pocket. Uh, this right here is no different, except it's just a little bit longer. And that knife blade is so, so sharp. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. The way that this comes out is just nice and smooth out of the pocket. You got that deep carry pocket clip, so it sits nice and low profile. Everything's black hardware, so it's less likely to attract attention non-reflective that's a uh, black coated uh stone wash on there on the blade yes it is uh bowler m690 so just keep that in mind if you guys like the steel or not that's what it is and i i enjoy it i like the m690 and then it says right there doug markita and bastinelli knives you got the markita logo right there with the, the scarring so that's really cool you got the patent number right there and on the back of the spine it says Fox Italy, and it says Bowler N690 Cobalt. So, awesome stuff. Really cool. And it is. It's comfortable in the hand. It really is. It is comfortable, and it's super, super lightweight. All right, so I'm going to get into the specs of this knife. 
Uh, it is a liner lock. There is no other way to open this knife other than its front flipper slash pocket catch slash wave, whatever you want to call it. You can roll it out like that. You could, you know, I didn't make it that time, but <laughs> you could, you know, flick it out like this. You, there's there's a video on how ridiculous, the many ridiculous ways you can catch that and open it. You can even do it like that, and just two-handed, but do it all nice and smooth and all that. So that's, that's fantastic. Uh, if you can find the one in the G10, I would much rather do the G10 version because it's got better grip to it and it just looks a little bit better to me. Uh, the FRN, I'm not a huge fan of plastic unless they're doing it right, but this seems like, you know, it's pretty decent. So let's see how that holds up. Um, it actually does feel a little bit like G10, but it, there's not too much texture to it. So it does provide a decent grip out of the pocket, but it's not something that I would honestly... I don't know. It's just if you're if you're if you can only carry a knife uh, because of its blade length, this would be a great option for one of those things that falls in that category where you have to carry a small blade and you want to carry one for self defense. Well, then, bam, you got this one. Price tag on it is close to two hundred dollars, if not a little bit over, depending on where you go. This is one of those price tags where you might want to stray away and be like, you know what, I can probably invest in something a little bit cheaper and still be just as effective. But if you like the look of it. If you think it's more for you, then price tag really shouldn't be an issue. I pulled the trigger on this because I just love collecting Karam bits. I think they're really cool, especially Fox-related Karam bits. Bastinelli. <laughs> uh, you know, and I don't have too many Bastinelli knives. It's probably one other Bastinelli knife that I have, you know. So um, a lot of people say they're a bit underrated. I think they're okay. Anything, any other knife from any other knife company is better than SOG <laughs> is a good knife, okay? SOG is other, other garbage. I'm sorry. I absolutely hate SOG. I've given SOG three chances, and all those chances, they failed. There's only one decent knife that they have in their lineup, and even that is questionable. The materials are into it. They're ripping people off. I just, I don't like... And then they have such false claims. They just claim to be like, oh... Uh, Navy SEALs use our... No, stop that. Just stop. What Navy SEAL uses SOG? I just... I don't know. And then on top of that, if they use SOG, they don't use it out in the field. I've heard more of Benchmades and Cold Steels used out in the field over a SOG. If I ask somebody if they use a SOG, they look at me and laugh. <laughs> Talking to two Marines and they're like, SOG is crap. I'm like, yeah, they are. That's coming from a Marine. All right, so 3.25... Uh, ounces it comes in so it's under four ounces guys it's really good sorry I, I, I fell off of the map there when I was talking about it. I got into you know I absolutely hate SOG they're terrible so glad I got rid of my SOG knives I only had two maybe three knives that I actually thought were okay but even then I didn't care to own them or <laughs> keep them um, they're really attractive but they suck all right so Get into the length. So you're looking at two and three fourths inches with a two and five eighths cutting edge on there with an overall about seven and three eighths, seven and one fourths inches. All right. And your handle, you're looking at a good close to five inches, but four and three fourths, five and four and five eighths. So, you know, it's slim, it's small. It's lightweight, it's compact. Good. It's good. It's great for those CQC nutballs out there that freaking love that stuff, which I love CQC. I think that's freaking fun and awesome and really cool. So I'm not talking trash about it. So you're looking at 13.7 on the handle and on the blade, you are looking at a 2.6. Awesome stuff. Compact, low profile, blacked out. This is probably just one of the best. And you can, in the forward grip, this actually feels good in the forward grip. It really does. It has that thumb indentation at the, you know, at the top right here. It just feels comfortable. Even putting my finger through the through the hole right there, my pinky, it feels like it sits pretty well in the hand. Would I ever draw the knife out of, the, out of my pocket like this? Eh, maybe for fun, but 
it's got that aggressive kind of thing where you have to pull it out in reverse grip in order to really get the full experience of operating this knife. But it's great. I mean, it's an extension of you, and it's a great self-defense knife. Uh, coming from Bastinelli slash Fox Knives, <laughs> slash Doug Markaita, <laughs> great stuff. It really, really does. It's, it's, it's basically like it's Karambit, just with a different shaped blade. That's all it really is. Um, and, of course, different handle scales. Like I said, I would have opted out for the G10 if it was available, but I can't find it. I mean, unless I go to a secondary market, but I don't want to spend the extra dollar for that when this is just, you know, it's already as expensive as it is with the freaking plastic handles. But it's good stuff. I mean, I'll show you how sharp it is so you guys can really see. Um, get some paper real quick. I don't do enough cutting on my channel. I know I, I tend to forget, but I also run out of run out of time you know i'm trying to make him make the videos certain time frame so that's me not really trying i'm just gliding the blade across the paper ah, i just stabbed my own finger did you see that i just stabbed my finger just now yeah this thing is Stupid sharp. This thing is really, really sharp. So with it being what it is, it is... All right, before I do something really stupid, I might as well just put that down. Now, the only cons that I have to say about this knife that can probably get people to not want to buy it is, uh, one, <laughs> plastic handles. Uh, two... The tip is needle sharp. I mean, really, really sharp. <laughs> and just feeling it, you know, I, it's, I'm not bleeding, but I did feel that. And that was needle, needle sharp. And that was me not really trying. Look at that. That's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, great for self-defense. That's what this was designed for. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And the wave opener or this pocket catch right here works extremely well. It works the same way. Like everything, you just have to practice with it so that way you can get a little bit more familiar with it. And be sure you do, like I said, when you draw this out the pocket, do it confidently and fast. Because if you don't, you could end up like me and stabbing yourself in the pinky, in the base of the pinky and... Yeah, it took a little bit of time for that to heal because it kept opening and closing because it's in a bend. That sucks. <laughs> but this thing works so well. It really does. It's a fantastic knife. Or if you're just a collector like me, it's great for the collection. It really is. Um, or you can look it up and just learn how to use it for self-defense and carry it. If you know that you are at, you know, at your max limit of how you need to carry your knives because of how long the blade needs to be, well, this is a good short blade for self-defense if, if, you know, need be. Or you can use it as regular EDC. I don't, you know, who am I to judge you for opening up packages or whatever you want to do with this thing? Just careful with that tip. That thing is, is mean. This, this knife is mean. For its size, I mean, yeah, it's mean. Mako Shark? All right. Yeah, I can see that. Mako? All right. It ain't no Mokos. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's a good knife. It's a fantastic knife. Um, now that's, that's the only thing I can really say about this, uh, Bowler M690 hasn't done me wrong, uh, you got the steel liners in there, it is a liner lock, and not a lot of people like liner locks, if it really comes down to it, if you have the original Karambit with the G10, you can always swap out the handle scales, I'm pretty sure, because it's still, I put both of those together, and I've noticed the only difference is really the blade shape, same length, same screw holes it just works almost the same way so i don't see how that's not possible if that really if you're really into that desperate type of measure where you really feel like you really really want this over that then you can swap out the handle scales for one or the other if you have the other that is but it's good stuff either way um still just be really conscious about that i was also told that you can use this as an impact tool if you hold it a certain way 
you still have a lot of impact tool with this. But from what I heard, if you use this as an impact tool, you run a really high risk of damaging the handle scales and the hardware because this doesn't have anything protecting it from that type of uh, use and impact. Uh, assuming that you're going to, you know, use this as an impact tool, um, it's told you can, but there's no indication here that shows me that I can other than the grip. You know, it just looks and feels that way. It doesn't mean that it should be. You know what I mean? I don't know. But you can, if you want to use the less lethal option, just make sure you don't miss and hit something harder than you should because then you run the risk of damaging the pivot because that thing is just so damn close to the edge of this that using this as anything more than what it's designed for can lead to possible damage or breaking of the knife. Guess don't miss. <laughs> Anyways... Good stuff. Awesome, awesome knife. Uh, very aggressive tip. Like I said, just keep that, you know, just be conscious about that. Um, try not to cut yourself with this thing because this blade is mean as heck, but also really super cool. Glad to have it on my channel. Glad to have it in my collection. <sighs> really wish that I had the G10 version. Anyways, go ahead and slash that like button, stab that subscribe, slice that freaking bell icon so you guys are notified when I post new stuff. And um, in these craziest times, everybody, please be kind, be safe, carry responsibly, and I'll see you all awesome people in the next video.